All right, guys, in this video, we're going to look at fonts, uh, specifically the font family property and font size property. So you might want to use different styles of fonts in different websites and different user interfaces. So we're going to take a look at how to do that. We're going to talk about web safe fonts and also how to use fonts from um, from other sources like Google fonts. So let's create a new file here called 03 underscore fonts dot HTML. And we're going to put our boilerplate in here and let's go down and just change the title to fonts and let's put our style tags in here for our CSS. And then I'm going to copy from the last file, the selectors, just the, the two divs that are in the, the HTML here, just so we can use them as a as as a text display. So I'm going to save this and then open with live server. And let's make it a little bigger. I'll hold control and hit the plus symbol and just make these a little bigger. All right. So in our style right here, let's add a selector for the body. That's usually where you're going to add your font family because then it affects your whole page, right? So the fonts on for your whole page. So we want to use font dash family, which takes in a font stack. So basically, a list of different fonts and in VS Code we get this cool drop down so we can of font stacks that we can choose from but before we get into that I want to take a look at web safe fonts now you have the ability to use pretty much any font that you want that you can get your hands on but if they're not these web safe fonts then you're going to want to include them include the actual font files within your website just like you would include a CSS file And you can also link to them remotely, which I'm going to show you how to do with Google fonts. But these right here, you don't need to do anything extra for because they're going to they're going to be available in all all browsers that users are, are using to view your website with. And notice that there's some of these. There's multiple fonts. Uh, these are actually called font stacks. For instance, this first one, Arial Helvetica Sans Serif. What's going to happen is it's going to look for the Arial font to use. If it, if it can't find that, it'll move to use Helvetica. If it can't find that, it'll use to use any sans serif font. So basically you have sans serif and serif. And these this is an example of what these look like. So basically a serif font has these these edges, these points on the edge. And a sans serif font is like a flat look. Uh, for the most part, you're probably going to want to use a sans serif font because they just they just look neater. They also look much more modern. And part of the reason for that is because Times New Roman, which is a very serif font, is the default. Okay, so when we don't add a font family, that's what's used. Some of my favorite web safe fonts are Arial. Uh, I also like Verdana. I like Tahoma. So let's jump back into VS Code and, and Chrome. And by default, like I said, it's using sans serif. You can see the the kind of like the, the point. See the A right here. So I want to change this to Arial. Now in VS Code, if I just type in A, Arial, Hel Hel Arial Helvetica sans serif is actually an option. Okay, so this is a font stack. Like I said, it's going to look for Arial, then Helvetica sans serif. If I save this, notice how it changes into a, a flatter looking font. Okay, let's try something else. Let's try um, Verdana. So we'll just if I just put a V in there, it's going to Verdana is going to pop up. So we have Verdana, Geneva, Tahoma, sans serif. Save it. It's a little different, but it's still a sans serif font. Okay, so if you want to use something different, something that isn't um, in that list I showed you, then what I would recommend is using Google fonts. So I'm going to open up a new browser here and just make it bigger and let's head over to fonts.google.com so here you can go over to the search you can search for certain fonts you can browse them if you want you can see samples of them I like Roboto that's one I use quite a bit And you'll see it pops up over here. There's Roboto, Roboto Condensed, Roboto Mono Slab. So let's say we want to use this Roboto font. We can click this plus sign right here 
and we get this little pop up. And if I click on that, it shows us how we can bring this into our HTML. We can do it using a link tag, just like we do with just regular CSS files. We can also import it into our CSS like this. Usually I do import it, but since we're putting our CSS in the HTML file, I'm just going to use the link. Okay, so if we grab that and then it shows us how we can actually implement it, we can just add the font family and then Roboto sans serif. So let's go back into uh, VS Code and let's open up our, our other browser here. And let's go right below the actually we'll go right above the title and paste in that link. Okay, so it links to fonts, Google APIs dot com slash CSS. And then as a parameter, it has family equals Roboto. So now we should be able to go ahead and put in Roboto, just like it said, and then sans serif. And if I save it, there we go. And that looks pretty, pretty nice and clean. I really like the Roboto font. So that's how we can use um, basically non web safe fonts. Okay, so next thing I want to look at is font size. Okay, so let's say font size. Now the standard is 16 pixels and that's actually on the HTML tag. Okay, the HTML tag by default uh, has a font size of 16 pixels. That's what you're seeing that we do have this zoomed in a little bit. That's why it's bigger. Actually, let's put it back to just uh, oops. Let's put it back to just 100%. So I'm going to do control and then the minus. And that's 110, that's 100. So that's the default. So let's change it to 18 pixels. Okay, and for the most part, I usually leave it at 16. But just to show you, I'll change it to 18 and save. And now you can see it's bigger. Um, also, we can adjust the line height, which is basically the height of each line. So let's say line, oops, line dash height. And this is going to this is usually in M units, which is a relative unit. And I'm going to go over rem and M units later on. So don't worry if you don't really understand this. But uh, a common a common value I like to use for the line height for the body is 1.6 M. And we'll save and notice how now there's more space in between each line. Okay, so I think it makes it look a little cleaner. Now, I want to talk a little bit about units, so pixels, M and so on. Now, looking at this list of CSS units, this one, which is absolute units, and then we also have relative units, it may be a little overwhelming, but don't worry about it because we don't use most of these. In fact, the only thing we're going to use on this page is pixels. Pixels is the is the the common absolute unit that you're going to use. Um, you can use centimeters, you can use millimeters, inches. You can set your font to one inch if you want, but that's not, not something that you're probably going to do. What you're going to use is pixels and the exact size size of one pixel is 196 of one inch. Okay, there's also points. Points may be familiar from something like uh, Microsoft Word and one point is 172 of one inch. You may run into points, but for the most part, you're going to see pixels. You also have picas, which uh, it's e actually equal to 12 points. Okay, you're not going to really see that. Now, there's also something called relative units, which I'm going to get into later. I'm not going to really focus on this right now. But for instance, you have percentage. You can set it to a uh, percentage of a parent element. And by the way, this doesn't have to be just font size. This could be for margin, padding, line height. Um, Uh, what else with height, all that stuff. Okay, so you also have M and rem units. M is basically um, it's a multiplier. So whatever the size of your parent element, let's say the parent div to a paragraph is is 16 pixels and you set it set it to 1 M. That's going to be equal to 16 pixels. If you set it to 1.2 M, that'll be equal to 16 pixels times 1.2. Rem units act the same way, except instead of the parent element, they use the root HTML element, which by default is 16 pixels. So if you set it to one rem, by default, it'll be set to 16 pixels. And if this is confusing the crap out of you, don't worry, we're going to get into this stuff later. Um, I'm not even going to bother going over viewport width and viewport height right now. All right, so let's head back into VS Code. And I'm actually going to put the font family back to Arial. 
or Ariel Helvetica Sans Serif. And I just want to show you a couple more font properties. So I want to look at font weight and font style, which are very simple. They're basically used to um, make some text bold or, or make text italic. So I'm going to add a span in here. So let's say span. I'm going to take the ending tag here, control C, copy it, delete it, and then put that there and also put a span down here. Oops. Let's do span and we'll take the ending tag, and put that down here. All right, so let's save that and let's go up here and I want to show you how to target these spans. So for this one here, we can say we want to go into the welcome div. Okay, so the div has the ID of welcome and then we want to go into the paragraph and then we want to go into that span. So that's how we can target this first span right here. Now, technically, we don't even need the paragraph because it's still going to look in into this div with the ID of welcome and then onto the span. But I think it's more organized to keep the paragraph in there. Okay, just as an extra step. And let's say we want to make the font weight bold and notice that this this VS code gives us the selections, which we could use numbers to make them more or less bold. But we're just going to choose bold and save and notice how now the, the span, the text that's within the span is bold. Okay, so just like the strong tag, we can set it to bold through CSS. So let's target this this span down here by saying we want the about div paragraph span. And we're going to set the font style to italic and save. And now you can see it is very faint, but this text is now italic. So these are the font based properties. In the next video, I want to start to get into colors. And you saw that I used, for instance, the color name like red and green. I also use this weird uh, this number sign and then some some letters. That's actually called hexadecimal. We also have something called RGB. So I want to look at colors and the different types that we can use in CSS. Fuck me, I'm looking in the mirror, so foggy, but I've never seen clearer.